morning. <laughs> Good morning, First Church. This is the five before, and we're so glad that you're with us. I'm filling in for Jake Seaton. Pastor Jake Seaton's our online campus, and he couldn't be here with us today, but what he usually says when he has a co-host is, I have my favorite person with me. So today, I actually do have my favorite person with me, and it's Pastor David. He happens to be my husband as well. So today's a special day here at First Church. So you want to tell us what we're doing today? It's Do Something Day. So this is a um, big day where we go out and we serve our community. Yeah. So we have a little abbreviated pep rally type service, and then we're out. Yeah. Taking so, it to the street. So how many people do we have signed up? Do you know? I mean, I know we've had more come in, but yeah. prior to we starting, how many yeah. did we have signed up? I think like 853. But, I, wow. but I've, I've seen people, hey, what's going on? Can yeah. I get in, jump in, yeah. all that. So. Yeah. Hey, it's Jen Steinbrenner. <laughs> and she has a yellow shirt, so that mean, must she's mean a she's a leader. leader. Oh, see, she's a special see, person. We're just peons we're just you know just the, just, the we're just, pawns yeah yeah or whatever we, she tells us what to do it's really yes. kevin good stuff <laughs> or kevin okay I just, right. I just wear the shirt you just wear That's the shirt good. all right so how many projects are going on today i think we have 96 projects over 40 i think 42 organizations some are non-profits some are municipalities yeah. like cities townships all that yeah 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 so david when did this yes. start? This started, well, probably Jesus and the disciples first did. They well, did, did I some, mean, do when did this creation. start here at First Church? Okay. And how was that, like, yeah. how, where, how was that birthed and all of those things? So we've been here like 15 years, and we had started just wanting to get outside the walls of the church and really doing that early on. And we started doing what, if you recall, what we called... Um, uh, random acts of kindness. Yeah, so we would get together on kindness. Saturdays yeah. and we go and we give out bottle bottles of water. We do car washes or dog washes or we did a gas buy down. Get, which, just did wow, all kinds of stuff that like that. And then you and I we went to California and saw this church that the entire church yeah. did something where they they went out and they went out in the community. Yeah. And so we took that idea from San Diego, California. Yeah. Miles McPherson. Yeah. yeah, we did. We saw them, and then so we brought that idea back. And so it was 2011. So yeah, yeah. So, so we did 2011, 2012, 13, 14, 15, and then we took a little break. Yeah. 2018, and then we were gonna do here it, we are. and then COVID hit. Yeah. So we postponed it two yeah. more years. So, so here, here we, we are, are. We're back. 2022. Do something, and we're super excited about it. Our church family's excited about it. And we just do this because we want to make, what we say all the time is, we want to make Jesus famous. It's just, God loves you, and so do we. Yep. So that's why we do this. But also, the vision of First Church over the years has been, and it's a little tagline that's in the dot of the exclamation point. Yeah. Look at this, my shirt's already stained this <laughs> restoring morning. Restoring God's ideal. Um, it says restoring God's ideal. So what does this have to do with restoring God's ideal? Well, we really think that, you know, serving is a piece of where we're, we're living out of faith. Jesus said to let your light shine before men that they yeah. see your good deeds. So we want to shine our light yeah. before our world, for our community, so that God gets the glory. So that's part of restoring God's ideal. So we're at these great organizations that serve the community, and they might not have the manpower or people power yeah. to paint something or do some landscaping or whatever. And so we're able to do that so they can focus on the, the good things they're doing helping people yeah whatever. yeah but it's more than just serving yeah, and yeah. also yeah there's other pieces to that vision so what are some of those other pieces to that vision of restoring God's ideal we say <clears throat> that it's irreducibly complex you can't get it any simpler yeah or it, it, it than serving yeah growing right. which is being discipled being more and more like learning how to be more like Jesus and then mm -hmm. worshiping right so worshiping growing serving yeah that's what first church wants to do we want to restore yeah. God's ideal in our community but earlier on the way right and part of restoring God's ideal too is when we talk about being that light to our community is also reaching other people for Jesus and that's yeah. part of what this is is that we are letting God's light shine through us so that we can reach other other people with the gospel message of Jesus Christ and so that's why we're super excited about today we love this day just so much so so what are you doing I am <laughs> today <laughs> we signed up for landscaping and what we didn't realize we, it said heavy landscaping so we thought it's just a lot 
Well. Turns out it's like heavy. Turns out it is like <laughs> heavy. So we're going to be shoveling pea gravel today. So it is time to shoot over to the service. So we're going to do that right now. But we want you guys to know that we love you. It's not too late. If you, you want to sign up, you just come join us. We've got projects that you can still jump in on. So come on by First Church here or at any of our campuses, and we'll see you later. Have a great Sunday. With his love is beaming. I am a child of God. Heaven's golden light over me is streaming. I am a child of God. Sing it out.
cross, Jesus is waiting, God so loved the world. Come on, give the Lord a hand today. Amen. Awesome. Uh, as we, so I just wanted to, uh, to welcome everybody. We're glad that you're here. If you are in the back by the door, if, uh, if we could move a little bit this way. There are seats if you are, maybe, in, and if you're in the front, if you're in the, where the chairs are, you can go ahead and have a seat. If we have any older adults or people that might need a seat, we're going to, we won't be here very long, but feel free to fill in these uh, front areas. And if we could just move in so everybody that's kind of in the doorway can can get in. Well, welcome if you are online or by radio. This is Do Something Day. Anybody excited for Do Something Day? Anybody, this is, your, how many people, uh, you are veteran do somethingers? All right. Okay. How many, this is the first time you've ever been to a do something thing? All right. Welcome the newbies. We're glad that uh, you guys are here. Uh, so let me just, as we get started, let me just give a shout out to Jenny Fry and her team. Uh, Jenny did a tremendous job. Thank you to all our project leaders. They're the ones in yellow shirts, so they're the ones we all have to listen to today. Notice I don't have a yellow shirt. I'm just a, a nobody hauling gravel or something. I don't know what I'm doing exactly. Uh, uh, we have over 850 people across 96 projects, 42 different organizations, municipalities, townships that we're serving. So that is absolutely coming out of crazy COVID days. It's absolutely amazing to see all of us going out to make Jesus uh, famous. That's what we want to do this, this uh, today. Let me give you a few logistics as we, and, and just we'll take a few minutes and then we're, we're going to go and we're going to serve. Um, first, when we dismiss in just a few minutes, we want you to go immediately to your project. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Go right to your projects. Um, you're going to grab a lunch on your way out, so make sure you, you stop and get that. If you've got questions, and some of you may have a question about your project or what's going on, um, you can go to the Info Hub. You may be here today, and you're like, this is a super weird church. I've never been here before. What do, are you doing? If, you, if you're here for the first time, we're really glad that you're here. You picked a great weekend because this is who we are. We're, going, we're about restoring God's ideals, serving. and so. Uh, but if you have not signed up, you came late to the party, we, we, we can get you connected to a project. So you can go in the lobby. There's an info hub out there. Again, talk to them. They'd love to, to help you out. Um, also, yeah, make sure you grab your lunch. Yeah, and then finally, this is really important. Uh, most of us have smartphones, and we really want to encourage you. One of the ways that we can shine our light in the community is through social media. So I encourage you to take lots of pictures at your project. As you take those pictures, do two things. One, uh, uh, and wherever you're sharing, you can use the hashtag do something 22. And if you want to go back and see some past years, you could look up do something 15 or do something 18. And there's a lot of really cool pictures and this has some video and there's some really neat stuff. But anyway, do something 22 and make sure also, secondly, that you tag us, tag the church and if you have no idea what I'm talking about and you have a smartphone, find a young person, <laughs> a teenage, there are teenagers, they will, they'll, they'll uh, give you a little in-service, help you to know what exactly I'm talking about. But that's just a way so that all, imagine how many friend groups all of us have together, how we can make Jesus famous just on social media. We can flood this area. Everybody can know, and as we're making Jesus famous, we can, we can work to, together to do that. Let me real quickly remind us of why we're doing what we're doing. The, the passage that we've talked about multiple times, uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, you are the light of the world. First church, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who's in heaven. Today, we are a city on a hill, and we want everybody in the house, everybody in this county, everybody in these communities that we serve, we want them to give our God the glory. We want to shine the light of Christ. There's a great 
quote that I'm sure we've all heard. Francis of Assisi said, Preach Christ at all times, and when necessary, use words. Today, we are primarily sharing Christ, being the light of the world, by doing what Jesus said, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works, your good deeds. We are showing our world that we love our world. What did Jesus do? We're reflecting Christ. And what did Jesus do? Jesus served. Mark 10, 45, for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So we are serving not for ourselves, we are serving our world. We are preaching Christ. We are reflecting Christ as we go out and as we serve. So today is not about going out beyond these walls and pointing out to the world where it's in error. Today is about pointing people to God's love and pointing out God's love. Not pointing out errors, but pointing out God's love. We want to remind the world that God loves them. That's, a, this, that's what this is about. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, one final passage. He, talking about Jesus, went about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil, for God was with them. As we reflect Christ, that's what we want to do. We want to go out and we want to serve like he did. We want to go out and we want to do good like he did. And we, as just like it says, and God was with him, God is going to go with us. He's going to go before us. Earlier in the week, you remember the rain forecast? It was supposed to rain today. It's beautiful today. That's awesome. So God goes with us. Now, the, the, the why matters, but the how matters as well. So just for a couple minutes, let me remind us of the how. First, as we think about how we're going to reflect the love of Jesus, how we're going to serve today. Just some of you... We got all kinds of different projects. Let me just say, there is no project too small. There is no project too insignificant that God cannot use it to encourage someone, to bless someone, to be the hands and the feet of Jesus, to show God to someone. So don't think, well, I'm just doing blank. It's not that big of a deal. When God is in it and we're doing it in his name, he can do the miraculous through us. So there is no insignificant uh, job. Uh, we are doing something. We're, we're encouraging our community. And we're doing it motivated by Jesus. We want to be like Jesus. We're, and as we do it, we are, it, when, it, the scripture says, whenever we've done it unto the least of these, we've done it to him. So when you're doing whatever you're doing, you're not just doing it for the people, for the community. But as we serve, we're loving our Lord. We're loving our Savior. So don't forget that. When we've done it unto the least of these, we've done it to him. The second thing I would say is that we, that people are watching us, so we should serve with excellence. It's a privilege to serve. We are, we are doing it in Jesus' name, so let's do it well. Let's serve with joy. Let's have a positive attitude. Let's do it with exuberance. My dad's here today. They came up from southern Illinois to serve with us today, my mom and dad, and my dad taught me a long time ago, if you, son, if you're going to do something right, do it right the first time. Exactly. So that's going to be our attitude. Let me confess something. Crystal sometimes gives me an assignment at home, and I do it. And if she's not around, I sometimes think to myself, well, this is good enough. I could do better, but this is good enough. Today is not a good enough day. We're putting, we're not, do not have that thought. We're doing it for our Lord. We're doing it for our Savior. We're doing it for this community. So there's no good enough. Do it right the first time. Let's do it better than anybody else is going to do it is the way that we're going to do it uh, today. Do something 22. The next thing I would say, and I say this all regularly when we go out and do something, we must today be flexible. Okay? Everything, newsflash, everything today will not work out perfectly. What does the military say? No battle plan survives contact with the enemy. 
No matter how much we've planned, no matter how great, and they've done a wonderful job, our our leaders have done a wonderful job getting everything ready, there will be stuff that won't show up, that things won't happen right, there'll be mess ups or whatever, but we are going to be what? We're going to be flexible. So it's not going to be that big a deal. We're going to, even though some of you little things are a big deal, but today the be flexible light is lit, Okay on every project, so we are going to be flexible. So if somebody gets a little, starts getting a little off, just tell them, you remember what Pastor David said? He said to be flexible. So don't sweat the small stuff. Let's be flexible today and let's show the light of Christ in our world. All right, the other thing I'd say is get to know people. Get to know people on your project. There are some, some groups, some organizations, and they're really struggling. COVID has been tough. And we have a chance to interact with them. I would encourage you to get to know them, get to know their story, get to know about their organization, love on them, encourage them, be the light of Christ to that leader, that person. Maybe you're there and you're serving and the people that, that are, take, get, get a blessing from that, whatever that organization is, they're there. Encourage them, bless them, be a, be a light to the people, all of them around. And also get to know one another across three campuses. All of us are working together. So some of your projects will have people from different campuses. Get to know people, get to know their name. Ask this question. If you you think, well, I think I should know them. I think they've probably been around a while and you know how to broach that question. Just say, how long have you been at First Church? Okay, that's a, that's, Okay, so let's get to know each, know one another, and that'll be a great thing too. We'll maybe meet some new friends today that we can serve uh, with. And then the final thing, if Jesus opens a door for us to be a witness today, we're not going to knock any doors down, but if there is a door to share the hope that we have in Christ— I want to encourage you to walk through that door. We don't have an ulterior motive today. We've said this before. We don't have an ulterior motive. We are just serving to be the hands and the feet of Jesus, to love our community, to love well, to do things like Jesus did it and Jesus served. So we don't have an ulterior motive, but we have an ultimate motive. And that ultimate motive is to shine the light of Christ. And who knows what conversation that you might have when someone asks you the question, well, why are you doing this? And if they say, why, ask that question, why are you doing this? You can just simply say, because God loves you, and so do we, and we're showing you that in a practical way, and that's why we're here. Okay, let's try, try that one time. Why are, you, why, why are you doing this? Because God loves you, and we do too, and we want to show you the love of Christ. Okay. There are some variation or derivative thereof. It's because I just messed it up. I said two different things, didn't I? I'm sorry. Okay. There's a lot going on, Okay. You're going to be flexible, right? Okay. Um, And so we are preaching Christ today, but we primarily do that as we serve. But if someone wants to have a conversation, have a conversation. If you are still on the journey and and, and that's going to be super weird for you, just... Uh, just point them to your project leader or somebody else on your team. I'm sure there's somebody that would be glad to have that conversation. Okay, one final quote. I'm going to invite our worship team to come back up because we're going to end on a, on a fun, uh, positive uh, worship vibe. And if you are online or by radio, we've got a, uh, we, we, we've got a, just an explanation, a little show, a little, a little fun thing that we, we've recorded that we're, you're going to hear. And so it'll be, it'll be super fun. Give me some of the history and some stuff. So make sure you don't tune out. That's going to come up right when I get finished uh, talking. Uh, so here's what Steve Shogren said. He said, small things done with great love will change the world. Small things done with great love will change the world. And that's what we're doing today. Small things done with great love that's going to change our world. Today, we have the absolute privilege of being the light of Christ, of reflecting Jesus. And together, friends, as God works through us, he can work through us to change our world. And so we're praying that God would use our good deeds and that and today... First Church, it's not about First Church, it's about our Hey, God. good morning, everybody. Man, it has been a great Sunday morning, uh, and it's, it's um, w- we're going to have a great day today, right, Al? We're going to have an awesome day today. It's yeah. going to be terrific. After a little bit of worship, we're going to go out and serve the greater community. And, and Jake, just a quick story to get us mm-hmm. started. Um, I've been a member at First Church since 92. Now, I'm back in the Bob Moss days, right? Okay. I thought Bob Moss was the greatest speaker ever. And then they hired this 
younger guy who had this gray hair and I, and he came to town and and I had a conversation I had actually had a con- him and I went and had a cup of coffee and I said first church does all this terrific work across the world we get we're active in Hungary and Eastern Europe and I said the one thing I'd like to see us do a little bit more we have a lot of needs right in this community yeah. in Southwest Michigan and how can we make an even greater impact and I think some of the work that David and Jenny and, and the entire staff has done has really pushed that forward much, much more than, than I thought would happen in, in, a, in a coffee conversation years ago with the new guy who came to town. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. That's, that was kind of the, I think maybe the, the germination of it, but I think David had a vision for how can we really make a difference and get out there and, and make something happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a great way to start us off, not, not just with your story, but yeah, with, with a wonderful uh, service, kind of a pep rally type service with yeah. some great worship. Um, I think before we get too far into things, I want to introduce myself, and I would love for you to do the same, Al. My name is Jake Seaton. I'm the online campus pastor here at the church. Uh, we are coming to you live on um, WSJM at the moment, uh, as well as online, and I'm just, I'm just excited about today. There's, there's a buzz this whole week about do something. So anyway, uh, I've been at the church for nine years, nine years. That's crazy. Um, I started here as a worship pastor and kind of made the switch over to online campus uh, about a year and a half ago. So um, lots of good things going on here. So Al, tell us a little bit yeah, about I mean, you. My wife and I, I, I grew up Lutheran. She grew up Catholic and we moved to, to St. Joe and some friends of ours said, and we were kind of church shopping mm-hmm. And uh, we landed at First Church, and I listened to Bob Moss, and there were all of these middle school activities at the time. We had a middle school child, and Chris Spitters was doing middle school. Yeah. So Angela got involved in some D groups, and this became our church home rather, rather quickly. I mean, we decided, wow, this is a great place. There's lots of things going on for kids, for mm-hmm. families. Uh, I'm a survivor of the, the legislature and uh, a refugee of the Snyder administration who then came back from Lansing in, in 2018. I'm now at Conexus Group and, and still a member of First Church. Yeah. Yeah. I find it interesting it's common um, for people to find First Church because their kids like it here. Yeah, no, and that that was the driver. It really yeah. was. And, and Wednesday D groups, right? I mean, she yeah. went every Wednesday, and we got more and more connected with some of the activities yeah. going on here. And yeah. we still have a, a thriving youth ministry and kids ministry. It's kind of the coolest thing around for kids, I think, in the community. Um, my, I have four kids, and so all of my kids are involved. In fact, I have um, I have one that just graduated last Sunday into middle school so i have two middle schoolers now which kind of blows my mind <laughs> absolutely don't worry don't worry they come back around <laughs> they become people again in high school <laughs> oh man oh it's pretty crazy um so i want to go back a, a second um my first week here in town on staff was do something sunday oh boy wow isn't that crazy a great way to start yeah so i i, I just <laughs> One of the things that my wife and I fell in love with about First Church when we came to town, we were hired on to be a part of this church, was the fact that we were trying to restore, not to to, to use the the church's like tagline, we wanted to restore God's ideal. I had just read a book that was all about that. And um, it it just blew my mind that this church literally was saying some of the exact same things I just read about. And I was like, I want to be a part of this. I want, I want to be a part where, of a church where we get outside of the walls of the church mm-hmm. and we be the church in the community. And people can, can not only see it, but they can feel it and they can become part of it. And I know it, in the, the first year I did this when we saw the neighbors come out, yeah. right? And, and they were helping to serve us because they saw us in that ravine, in that landfill, and we're pulling those garbage bags and then the city brought over a, a front end loader and 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 the people came and and they were joyful they were just thanking us for an eyesore that had been there for two three decades and here are these groups of people helping to clean it up and they were bringing us water and they mm-hmm. were helping to serve us yeah. so it, it was such well, a contagious. great dynamic right so yeah, hey we're doing this yeah. they want to serve it was beautiful yeah, yeah it really was Good well, very stuff. cool so um guys uh 
again, we're, we're pumped about today, and I have brought some friends along to have a chat with us. Uh, so you don't have to just hear me and Al drone on and on and on. Um, so um, Not that it's not really entertaining. No, no, it's compelling. <laughs> we are entertaining. Um, but so we've got several guests that, um, th- there they are. There's, there's our guests. There's some waiting in the wings over there. So if you hear some, <laughs> some cackling and howling over there, they, you know why. But our first uh, people that we want to talk about uh, is David Culp, our lead pastor here at the church, and Jenny Fry. How are you? I'm doing, doing well. good. Yeah. <laughs> five, five days away from do something. Yes. <laughs> yes. I think Jenny's got the deer in the headlights thing going on at the moment. Um, it all comes together, though. I mean, isn't it, it, and it's sometimes organized. We did food one year, and we had food all over our house. So we had both refrigerators filled. I didn't know what Sue had signed us up for. But, yeah, food was probably not the best one, but it was like, how are we going to keep all this food cold and then get it over to the church and yeah. we're hauling it back and forth and it was kind of organized that. chaos but it was it all came together it all came together yeah yeah, yeah so um so jenny how excited are you um i am really excited it's been four years jenny. has it been so f- been i thought it was three something. my bad it's been yeah, four years it has been that yeah we long. were getting ready to do it again and then covid hit oh right uh, yeah. another covid casualty <laughs> <laughs> That's a that's a terrible thing. So, why are you so excited? Besides, it just like it's finally coming back. Yeah. Why are you so pumped about it this well, year? Well, I think that um, there's kind of some renewed energy in the uh, the church community. People seem to be really excited about it. Um, we've got new folks here at the church that knew nothing mm, about right. do something, yeah, yeah. and um, that's been fun because it's kind of reminded me of that first year when we were. Um, you know, talking to people about it. They had no idea what we were doing. And um, so there's kind of an accommodation of the old excitement and the new excitement. And um, I think it's just going to be a really good day. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Pastor David, tell us about, were you here for the first do something? I was. Yes. yes. Were you? He was in the ravine. <laughs> yes, he I was there. saw him in the ravine. <laughs> yeah. He was there. So if you want the history, hey. so we, we had started. Yes, I was in the ravine. Sure, yes, I, I was in the there. ravine. So we, uh, Jenny and I, because Jenny was here before me, um, but uh, had started helping us with some outreach kind of stuff. And we were doing, if you remember that, uh, a Random Acts of Kindness. Steve Shogren had written a book uh, on mm-hmm. kindness, The Conspiracy of Kindness. And so we would do things in the community where we just like show up and just do things, serve and whatever. And then I took a trip to San Diego, uh, talked to Miles McPherson. He wrote a book called Do Something. Oh, look so at that. this Yay. is where we oh, got the idea. It's not an original the idea day. then. I d- I've never had an original <laughs> idea. R and D, yeah, R and D. That's right. Rip off and duplicate. <laughs> Rip off and duplicate. <laughs> so, so we took our little idea and we just. It got on steroids, and we said, "Well, we'll go do that." Uh, yeah, so that's where it. Yeah, Germany. No, we'll do 2000, something. We'll 2011 do was yeah. the first yeah. time we did it. Yeah. yeah. But if you remember, you came back and said, "Hey, I got this little project." <laughs> yeah, I get so these ideas, and then that. and then uh, Ginny, can you help me with this? Which means Ginny, can you do this, and then I'll. I'll be the cheerleader. Let's, let's just send a thousand people out in one day. And we were planning to do it in a couple yeah. months, if you remember right. that, and quickly realized that um, it wasn't going to happen that fast. So yeah. anyway, we postponed it a few months and did a little little better job of planning. Mm-hmm. And um, Yeah. Yeah. We got our thousand so, volunteers. Yeah. Well, and, and, wow. and how many individual, how many projects the first year? Yeah, that first year. Uh, I, I think it was fewer. We have okay. um, a hun- probably about 110 projects this yeah. year. Dude, um, that's a lot. But I don't wow. think we had quite that many the first year. Maybe Can just it, more five. people. Alive. Yeah. Can I tell you just one quick, super quick little story? I'm sorry, we're out of time? <laughs> so, <laughs> so it, is, <laughs> it is mildly interesting. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Absolutely. This is what so, we're doing. We're telling stories so, and learning so all I about it. So I have a tendency, as you're getting a sense for, of the cart getting ahead of the horse. I, you know, I get excited about something, and we want to charge this hill or whatever. And so we were. We had decided we were going to go to all the different municipalities 
whether that's a mayor or a city emergency city manager, if you remember yeah. those days. Yeah, I want one. Uh, yes. <laughs> you've got the scars to prove it. Um, and so we went to Frank Walsh, went to c- the city of St. Joe. Yeah. And I told Jenny, walking into the meeting, I said, Jenny, my promise to you is I will not commit us to anything in the meeting. And so <laughs> until I talk, till you and I talk, I won't commit us to anything. So we, we go into the meet. So we go into the, into that meeting and they're taught, we're like pitching this idea. They're struggling to get that they're, oh, well, I guess in so what projects could you, do they you want to keep help talking with? about sports is what right. they wanted to mm-hmm. do. Or pick up trash <laughs> at the, at the, and we're like, but we give us something that really got some, we could sink our teeth into something that you can't do. And Frank Wallace talked to the assistant at the time and they're like talking like off the line and, well, what about that thing? Oh, no, that's too big of a thing. And I'm like, well, no, no, no. What are you talking about? Right. And, he, and he said, we need the fire hydrants painted in St. Joe. But that's too big of a project, and you, can't, you, don't, you couldn't do that. And, and, and so, again, I had promised Jenny that I would not <laughs> commit us to anything. And so he we said, well, we'll talk about it, and we'll get back to you. In the ha- we closed the door to his office, and in the hallway, I said to Jenny, if we do not do anything else, we have got to paint every <laughs> single fire hydrant in the city. We've got to do what they think we can't do. So anyway, And there's that was your hundreds, <laughs> right? I mean, hundreds. Hundreds. Yeah. I yeah. think we had about... 50 people lined up for that project. Wow. Everybody wanted to paint them. This year, we're begging people. Because <laughs> oh, no. they've done it a couple times. Uh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So how many projects were there that first year? Do you remember? I wish I did. Um, Not 110? Did so- I heard no, somebody but, say yeah. so. 25 or so. Huh? It's about 25 or so? No. Uh, I think there were more than that. Yeah, but, no, I was going to say I mean, we, we kept 1,000 so. people busy, but yes. we had some maybe bigger projects sure. yeah. that um, yeah. more big numbers of people were on. So, so they, like fire Our producer is saying 60 offline. <laughs> that that sounds year? about right. Okay. Shout out yeah. to our producer yeah. today, by her, the way. Her memory's better Crystal than Culp <laughs> at the helm over there. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And Thanks, Crystal. <laughs> Holding it down. Yep. Yep. And archivist. And archivist. Yeah, and archivist yeah. <laughs> yes. Apparently. But, but we would Fact go. We checker. Would, we would go. We went to all the municipalities, but then we also went to a lot of the nonprofits we were working with, or that are just doing wonderful things. But sometimes yeah. you're struggling to have the manpower to do, or the per- people power to do whatever the whatever you need. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's kind of what we've landed on with Do Something is that rather than working with individuals, um, our kind of our, our vision is to support the organizations in our community yeah. that are working hard all year long to um, do do good things and support yeah. Yeah. Um, people with big needs. And so um, we find that those organizations just don't often have the manpower to do stuff for themselves. And so it is, um, it's really a great blessing to them for us to come in and mm-hmm. do some things that they just don't have the time to get done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. we did uh, emergency shelter services one year. And yeah. it was um, not only painting inside and out, but some folks from first church showed up with saws and tools <laughs> yeah. and we started working on the outside and doing the landscaping and it was like in a matter of four or five hours we refurbished that facility yeah um yeah that they they just didn't have the capital or the means to yeah. to do right. that sure yeah. and to have it done in one day was yeah. just terrific yeah sure yeah we've got the people it's not like right. we've got a million dollars to just spread out of the community and just pay to do things but we had all these people that we can no, I, show up. And, and, yeah. And, yeah. and folks went and got mulch. Mm-hmm. They said, well, mm-hmm. we'll go to the store and get some mulch. We'll be <laughs> right. back. We need and, a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, sure. okay, we're going to get some mulch. And then he comes back with a saw. And then we're, yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it was terrific. Just lots of work got done that probably weren't, wasn't on the original list Mm -hmm. or people that volunteered and then they got excited about this place they'd never really been to they didn't Mm -hmm. realize that all the great work's going on and they and then they're supportive perpetual volunteers yeah helping and that's really the end goal is not that we just all get together and have fun serving on one day but it's kind of to build into the lives of people the idea that you know we are created to serve. And so people do get plugged into mm-hmm. um, different organizations. And, um, you know, hopefully it's more of a ongoing service. Yeah. So, yeah, that's 
that's always the hope that that not this is we don't want to be the church one day a year yeah in the community we want to be the church all days of the year um i i i've seen i saw you talked about pastor bob moss not long ago mm -hmm. yeah um we did a video project with him and some other people uh recently and one of the one of the people that we interviewed art said something about what was so compelling to him was that they aren't this just the church on a sunday morning the church all the rest of the days of the week yeah and that's what we strive to be and we hope that our people come along with us in that way and that 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 they they do grapple onto one of these projects and they 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 join the forces of that uh nonprofit or or whatever the good is happening in that yeah. in that organization paul washer said there's no greater privilege than than being like jesus and Jesus came to seek or to serve, not to be served. That's exactly what we talked about uh, last Sunday. Jesus, first and foremost, served yeah. by washing the feet of the, of the disciples to be an example of what we are to be. And so let's go and wash the feet of our community, right? And we're coming out of this this period of such disconnection, right? Yeah. So people have become so disconnected in lots of ways. We've seen it, especially with young people, just disconnected from school and disconnected from family and disconnected from work that when something like this does happen, this is a way of pulling folks back together in a, a real community setting. And I think we've lost that a little bit yeah. over the last few years. And to try to, this is one way to try to regain that not only connection among each other, but a connection with the community as a whole. Yeah. 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 Any, um, any last thoughts from you guys before we, uh, we're going to swap seats with a couple people yeah. over there. So any, uh, any last thoughts before well, we, I was just thinking as Al was talking about people coming together, that's one of the things that I love about do something. Um, it's fun to see families signing up yeah. together yeah. and getting that's out cool. and doing that kind of activity. Um, but it's also bringing people from all three of our campuses together. Yes. So we did completely online sign up this year. So anybody had any opportunity to, um, sign up for any project and we've got people um, across the board on a lot of our projects so mm -hmm. that's a fun thing um, that we you know we can we can bring mm -hmm. people together yeah so. yeah David anything I love anybody? our church it's yes, really neat do. we we <laughs> we talk about it and people just want to be engaged they want to they want to serve and they just do a great job yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be a part of this great church. I hope you're proud, church. man. I, hope I you, am very proud. You guys proud. are both yeah. proud of the things that we've been yeah, able to do. In a do very good way, yep, absolutely. Specifically yeah. around do something yeah. and, and the catalyst that it is. Yeah. yeah. Do people yeah. notice, I mean, what are these crazy people doing on Sunday? <laughs> right. There's all of them yeah. all over town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, they do. Yeah. Yeah. These yellow and white t-shirts yeah. and whatnot. So. And hopefully, we, as we talk often, we're, hopefully it's a chance for us to make Jesus famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna let these guys off the hook for now, and and invite our next guest to join us. A uh, couple of couple of friends. Uh, Jenny mentioned a second ago about um, all the projects that we have for families to get involved with, um, and I had mentioned earlier about my first Sunday here was was do something Sunday. My daughter and I made the paper doing a project together that first year. Uh, we were we were spreading mulch, which is everybody's favorite activity. <laughs> and um, I'm I'm sure she had like the tiniest little right, shovel because right, she was right, four. Right. I mean, she was tiny. Um, but this year, uh, my daughter and I are serving together doing a project, and next, uh, and and my my wife and my other daughter get to serve together on a project. It's it's it is exciting for families to get to kind of serve together. So yeah, um, it really is. So our next guests uh, have been with us since the inception of Do Something. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Would you guys introduce yourselves a little bit? Okay. Tell us, who, tell us who we're talking to here. Okay. My name is Kathy Pastrick, and yes, I was a member of the first Do Something committee. And when Jenny, when you said Jenny looked like she was a deer in the headlights, the whole committee looked like that <laughs> the first year as we tried to choose um, different things to do for our groups. And we tried to cover the community and hit all the different areas that needed to be hit. But it was an absolutely amazing experience. Yeah. Yeah. Just 
absolutely awesome. Yeah. So you're Kathy Pastor. I am Kathy Pastor. You yes. are all around like the most smiley, bubbly person yes. here at the church. Well, you never yes. not don't have a I smile try. on your face. I try. Yes. Why yes. be grumpy? Yeah. Why be grumpy? I mean, we should not, get t-shirts. That sounds, I was going to say that sounds like a t-shirt. Why be grumpy? <laughs> Why be grumpy? Always have a, a picture of the Grinch the on there. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of t-shirts, that's a very nice t-shirt there. Yeah, I, I like, like. I like the yellow. Yeah. I think yeah. it. Brings yeah. out the highlights, highlights in my hair or something. I don't know. It's sunny. Hey, no hair jokes. Yeah. All right. That's easy. Of course, Jenny is Why? rocking her do something shirt for those of you listening on the radio. All right. Yeah. So, uh, friend to my right. Hi. I'm John Wallace. John uh, Wallace. I have been, this is the first do something I actually slightly embarrassed him not leading a project on out oh. of all the others. Okay. I don't want to hear any excuses, oh. John. <laughs> well, we had to have one slacker on. That's okay. right. Yeah. So That's right. I'm getting married and taking mom back to the airport on oh. Sunday. So I okay. know, can't do both. Okay. Sorry. You get a pass. It's fine. All right. It's fine. It's part That's of legit. taking care of widows and orphans. That's we'll, we'll taking count, care of mom. We'll count this right here. As this service. conversation. Okay. This is your do something contribution. So but I will be back next year or the year after whenever we, you know, absolutely are doing another one. And you'll yeah. have to lead up two or three projects. Well, that's fine. To make it. <laughs> yeah. You're taking over United Way for me, so yes. I feel that's going to be I in am. good hands. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. So um so we would love to hear some stories from do something's past from you guys and then uh, we want to kind of hear why why is do something so important to you? Why is it so meaningful to you? Okay. Well, um that first year, like I said, we were kind of deer in the headlights, and we didn't know what to expect. And I was able to do a gas buy-down over by the Benton Heights Church, which probably would be really useful this year. It would yeah. be so useful yeah. this year. Um, but I just, we had a great team, and we, you know, the first couple people that drove through, they're like, you want to do what? You want to help <laughs> us pay for the gas? And then we pumped it for them and cleaned their windshields, and we had hot dogs grilling, and so we'd bring them hot dogs and a beverage. And yeah, the first ones were really skeptical, the yeah. first people that came through. And why, why are you doing this? I mean, So you're well, just paying for people's gas. Yeah, yeah. and feeding them and yeah. cleaning their windows, mm -hmm. and yeah. just we were running all over the place. And I said, well, we love you, and Jesus loves you well, do we have to do anything? And I said, no, you just let us serve you. So as the day went on, people, you know, the word got out. And I remember Free gas. This, yeah, this, this sweet lady came and she said, now, I have another car. Can I bring that other car through? And I said, well, yes. of course, that's fine. Yeah. She said, you are such a blessing. Yeah. I didn't know if I'd be able to fill my cars with gas. And that was how they would get back and forth to work. Wow. So that was a pretty special year. Yeah. Just, yeah. They went from, what are they doing here, to really believing that we were just serving them because that's what Jesus does. Wow. So, yeah. That's awesome. So that was, was, that was year one. That was year awesome. one. Yes. I, uh, the last two years, I did work with families down in uh, Stevensville, cleaning up downtown areas as well. But all the prior years of that were at um, United Way, and that ties back to being on the board and working at United Way for you know, 30 plus years, I think actually until this past year. So um, it was each year we did a little more at United Way with, and it was wonderful. I sent you some pictures because we had families. I mean, we had mm -hmm. children with, you know, our families with four and five year olds helping to work on the grounds outside at what used to be the Easter Seals building before yes. it became yeah. the United Way building. Yeah. It's a former Margaret Upton home. Yeah. Um, and then inside doing other projects related to, for instance, this weekend, you're going to be doing uh, backpack packing for Selling back to school backpacks. supplies mm -hmm. for the folks. You know, I, one of the things that Jenny and David said earlier, and it ties back to, you know, Jesus said, the poor you're always going to have with you, you know. Well, our organizations, whether it's United Way or it's the Community Action Agency or any of another number of nonprofits, particularly now over the past couple of years, their funds are always just tight. Sure. They never know one year to the next how much money they're going to have to spend. And so these projects that we do for them, make a huge difference because it frees up resources for them to make a difference in somebody's life yeah. that is life-changing. And that's, you know, that's what we're called to do. Faith without works is dead. You've got to have the faith, you know, yes. and you've got to have that reason when somebody says, well, as Kathy just said, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. Well, 
Jesus loves you and I love you too. And I, and I don't care what your circumstances are. I'm just here to serve. Yeah. We've, we've, got, to, we've got to get the why yeah. behind yes. why we're, this, we're not just doing this because it's kind of a great and wonderful thing for our community and because people need it. We're doing it because Jesus loves everybody in our community. He loves, uh, he loves what we're doing, but he, but he loves us as people first and foremost. And we are called to take that beyond. Yeah. Right. I agree. And I love the I love the feedback that Kathy got. And that's, you know, mm-hmm. that's why we're out there. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's the feedback when people realize what you're there doing. Mm-hmm. So what what's the what's the craziest feedback you've heard when oh, you've wow. been out there? That's a great question. Hmm. The craziest. Well, feedback. I used to be a journalist, by the way. Yeah. You uh, did. <laughs> Back in the day. This pointed yeah. question yeah. would that would prove that. Yeah. I don't think I've had a crazy one. It's just they wonder why. Mm-hmm. Why are you doing this? One year we were at the compass fountain in the rain pulling weeds and people yeah. were in the rain looking at us oh. like well it made the weeds easier to pull out yeah right? that's true but again that was why and the same answer we're yeah. serving because jesus serves us well and it's like al said earlier i mean you don't you don't go to church to get fed uh about god on sunday only and then don't eat anything the rest of the week you yeah. know so this one sunday is as very important in for getting out, witnessing for Jesus, and doing good works in the community, but it leads to all kinds mm-hmm. of other folks who grow into, oh, uh, maybe I should attend there, that's not why we do it, but maybe there's other things that I could be doing with my time to serve God in my community, and let me talk to Jenny about that and see what she, <laughs> yeah, has, yeah. she has on her list, uh-huh. you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I love that... Um, that we have people that have been here since the inception of, of do something. Um, and that aren't, you guys aren't, are you guys on staff here at the church? No, no, no. Yeah. We're, yes, we're full-time volunteers. (laughs) We got a raise. We get communion once a month. That's the raise. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's amazing to me, the buy-in that we have, uh, Mm -hmm. among volunteers in our, in our church family. So, um, thank you guys for, and it doesn't feel like a job. No. And I think that's, what's so cool that it's, it is a family feel, sure. and we're all working together. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Well, thank you guys for being willing sure. to tell, tell uh, the stories uh, from yesteryear and and your excitement about this year. Yes. So Praise thanks God. for joining us. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we're going to let our next guests kind of join us. Um, Al, any any thoughts come to mind after hearing some of these cool stories from from John and Kathy? I just just how important it is now, not, not to overplay the impact of COVID or anything else, but it's just, it seems in so many parts of the country, everybody is so divided. Mm-hmm. And if this is a great example of it, it doesn't matter if you're blue, red, Democrat, Republican, it doesn't matter. I mean, this is about service and serving people yeah. and just having people come together for that, for this event, but making making this event just a catalyst for the rest of the year yeah right so that's that's what's so important well I, the other thing i liked about that story was we, we had talked about how there's some pe- we're hoping that people will go and do a project and then maybe grapple on to that organization or whatever the the other way is true with for instance with john is that he was already in, invested in what the united way is doing so he was able to easily jump onto that project so that yeah. was that was pretty cool all right couple of a uh, couple of really fun fellas sitting over here that have joined the table. Hi guys. How you doing? <laughs> <We're> co- <laughs> yes. Okay. We're talking to you two. <laughs> Hi May and Chris. Uh, would you guys introduce yourselves? Sure. I'm Chris Craig, um, acting as co-lead with uh, Jenny on this year's uh, Do Something. Okay. And my name's Jaime Cervantes. I am the pastor at the First Church in Benton Heights. Yeah. So you're campus pastor over there. Yes. Huh? yes. Heights. Um, so Chris, I'm yep. dying to know, man. How did Jenny rope you into this, man? This <laughs> that is, is a big that's job. That's the best question I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to preface this by saying that, um, you know, throughout my Christian walk, I just kind of ask God to bring things to me, and uh, and that's what happened. You know, I was looking for something more to do, get involved more, and Jenny called me up one day and said, I, I just stopped her mid-sentence, and I said, yep, I'll do it. So. Stopped her in mid-sentence. Yeah. So it was like, I have something for you to, yes. 
And what that, is that? Whatever it is. That is so good. I, wow. I bet Jenny was about to get to the ugly part, and you said, I'll do it. She just dropped Man, it right there. Well, that's yeah. what I found <laughs> out great. about the last eight months. Like, yeah, yeah. That, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Jaime, I have a question. That The first thing that popped into my mind is that you've kind of, in, in, in front of certainly your, uh, your campus and on our podcast that we have here at the church, you have been kind of the poster child for Do Something. And you, so? you've been a cheerleader for it, like big time. Okay, you're all about it. But you've never actually been here for a Do Something Sunday. This is true. How did you get so on fire for, for what we're doing? Because I've never been part of a church uh, in my entire life that has shot for such, you know, aim so high on one Sunday. You know, when, when Jenny and, and Chris started the planning, they're like, yeah, we're going to get a thousand people. And I'm thinking like, are, like, are you guys, that, is that realistic? You know, is that attainable? 800, a thousand, yeah. whatever it is. And, and how many projects? Like a zillion. And I'm thinking, okay, that's kind of a lot. Uh, but, but as this thing began to catch steam and, and just to see the scale and the scope that, that this project is, is, is going to have the impact. And, and of course, there's stuff you can measure, right? There's, you know, you can, how many people volunteered, how many uh, organizations will be served, how many projects we're doing. You can measure some of that stuff, but then there's really the stuff you can't quantify. Mm, and, that's right. and that's impact and, and the effect that this can have on, on our community, on us, on the kingdom. That stuff is really exciting. So for me, I, I'm just, I can't wait to see it happen and to really and then to see the aftermath right on the other side of do something and and start to really celebrate what god is going to do through this and how god will be glorified in all of this yeah. so to me that's really exciting yeah yeah well mm-hmm. i love i love your passion for it i really do, really do yeah this is this is going to be i think it's going to be huge I, I just can't wait to see it and i know the excitement that there's been around it people are are um Obviously, this, the, the amount of people that have signed up is a testament to, to, um, to that. And, and then the hard work that Jenny and Chris have put in, uh, I don't, it's just, it's, it's this, un, this is such a massive undertaking that I'm just so grateful for you too. Mm-hmm. And, and for all the time that you've put into this thing and the planning is, it, it's pretty, it's yeah. pretty incredible. Yeah. So all speak, right. so speaking of the, the planning, uh, Chris, tell us, um, what what are some new projects this year that we're jumping on uh, onto? That's hard for me to say because this is my first <laughs> do something. We're they're rookies, all new. Okay. They're all then, brand new. Yeah, <laughs> we're rookies right here. Yeah. Yeah. We have no idea. <laughs> so then, uh, give us. We're plowing a, new ground. <laughs> that's right. So I don't, then, forget, throw that one out the window. Tell okay. us, highlight a couple of projects because there might be people even on their way to their projects right now mm-hmm. listening yeah. on the radio. Uh, that are listening it to just highlight a couple of projects for us. We got like two, two or three minutes left here. Okay. Well, one of the things that has struck me most is probably the Michigan migrants ministry. Um, and part of my job throughout all these months is to go out to each project organization and figure out how many people we need, what kind of materials, what projects there are, if we can do them or not, whatever. So, um, I went out there and visited, uh, lady's name is Sophia Berger and her husband, Chris. And what they do is uh, she goes out to the uh, different farms and ministers to the migrants and their families. And then for a number of weeks in the summertime, they bust them into to their facility. And it's kind of like a camp. And the kids sleep over there and do all okay. kinds of stuff. But, um, you know, just to visit their facility and see the Spartan life that they live, you know, it was, it was impressive. Wow. You know, they bare bones. So, you know, of course we want to help them. And, sure. Uh, I think we have about seven different projects there that we're going to be doing on Sunday. So wow. Runs, awesome. runs the gamut Thanks from you know, remodeling a bathroom to cutting trees down to mulching to uh, fixing well pits and, you know, wow. all kinds of stuff. And wow. sometimes the, the same families have come back for 20 or 30 years mm-hmm. from asparagus to apples. They're here, mm-hmm. right? Right. And they're, they're, and they're definitely part of our community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. Well, I love them. I, I love today. I'm so excited about today. Are you guys pumped? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Pumped. Um, we're, we're, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, you know what? It, it's, it's just, um, it's, it's pretty incredible that, that uh, we're going to go out and do a whole bunch of somethings. Bunch of somethings. You know what I mean? It's not just do something. It's do a lot of somethings. And, yep. 
It, it, yeah, I, again, I just, the scope, the scale is so exciting. And I, I'm just, uh, I can't wait to see, again, yeah. the impact we had on the other yeah. side. So, yeah. yeah. And we all get to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. Praise, praise the Lord. Well, yes. thank you guys for joining us today. Okay. Al, thanks for hanging out. And Jake, thanks for including Thanks me. to That's all great. of our other guests that have been here today. Um, we got to let you go because we're out of time. But um, thanks for being here. Thanks for being the church. Thanks for getting out and being the hands of and feet of Jesus. And thank you, Lord, for allowing us that privilege to do that. With that, we'll see you later.